Welcome to the Grizzly Habits Podcast, where we create content that just makes people happy. I'm your host, Steve Schaefer, with my co-host, Stephanie Daly, and today we have a special guest on our show, Matt Mohawk Denny. Matt, your face is on a NASCAR. What? <laughs> Dude, I don't even know how that happened. I mean, I do know how it happened, but it's insane. Well, I want to hear all about it, because... Right after I met you, I'm scrolling through social media and legitimately I saw your face on the top of an ass car. I'm like, what don't I know? It, it's this whole thing about just putting yourself out there and when opportunities come, jumping at them. And this opportunity came and we'll dig into the story a little bit more. But this opportunity came and we just kind of said, yes, sure, let's figure it out. And we had 24 hours to say yes to this, by the way. When it was pitched to us, it said, we got to know tomorrow. Pressure's on. And we're like, all right, uh, sure, let's do it. Nothing we're right. in. Bring in the heat. Yep. Very cool. So your slogan, be awesome. Tell me a little bit about be awesome, because the first time I met you, I felt that awesomeness. And we can talk a little <laughs> bit more about that story a little later on. But um, you just shine awesomeness all around you. So where did that slogan come from, and what does it mean to you? So for me... I've always lived my life and I had a lot of years early on in the younger stages where someone saying hi to me, someone giving me a high five changed my day. Someone just saying, hello, Matt, because I had a lot of different things going on as a kid. It really, I really valued human, human, a connection. Someone just saying hi. And so I've always been about just saying hi to people, doing something that makes their, them smile, make them smile. Be Awesome specifically came from Lindy's sister. So my wife, Lindy Denny, um, came from her sister, Ginger Holine, and she fought cancer for about 12, 13 years, multiple times, multiple, all the stages that you can have. And, but through it, she built foundations. She was on a Wheaties box or Cheerios, one of the two. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And she went around the country promoting awesomeness and happiness through struggles and through chemo and created a company called Happy Chemo. And she lived and embodied being happy and being positive, not just over positivity, but being happy when you're struggling. And, and she really understood that you can choose your mood no matter what you're going through. And so she always used the word awesome in a lot of different ways. But what was really cool is she created the I Am Awesome Challenge. And it's this challenge where you go to a restaurant and if you're ordering food and you got to give your name, instead of giving your name, you say, I am awesome. And when they come out with your food, they say, order for I am awesome. And they're usually like, what? <laughs> and you get, you stand up and you're like, yes, you are awesome. And they smile, everyone claps. It's, it's the whole thing that she started doing. Um, she passed a couple of years ago. And so we started, what happened was Lindy, um, through COVID, we were all doing this video from home, right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have anything behind me. And so on my blank wall, so Lindy painted this painting, said, I am awesome. And she made this in honor of her sister with her favorite flower, uh, Poppy, which was just awesome. And it became, people started asking me, like, are you like arrogant? Are you cocky? Why do you think <laughs> you're so awesome? And I would share the story of why. And I am awesome is not about being arrogant. It's about knowing that no matter what you're doing, you can be awesome. You can have a good day. I say I'm awesome because my mom told me so, so I'm good. I'm <laughs> it's like, always true if your mom says it. Exactly. I'm covered. Um, and so because awesome was just around me, I do a lot of video content. I have for the last two, three years. And over COVID, probably three, 400 videos online. And I just started saying be awesome. I didn't even realize it. I didn't even know I was saying it. It eventually morphed into be the reason someone has an awesome day. Is what I say at the end of my stuff. Because anyone has the power to make someone smile. But really what took it off was I didn't know I said it. And for our 10-year anniversary, so wives, if you're thinking like, oh, yeah, you get this wonderful gift for your husband. It's something like a four-wheeler or something like that. Not at all. She got me a stamp with my face on it. <laughs> um, and it is says be awesome across the top. That's cool. And then for those following us on YouTube, we have exclusive content. We're showing video right now. So be sure to follow Grizzly Habits right now on YouTube. And you can see this stamp, yeah. which resembles exactly <laughs> what I remember seeing on, again, a NASCAR. And, and it was. And this stamp became viral in its own way because I applied it to a sticky note. So I took stamp and sticky note because it's what I use for work. And I just put them everywhere. And it became this part of my brand of this thing. And... 
a lot of people would make fun like oh you're just like being arrogant putting yourself it's not about that it's just about spreading happiness spreading joy wherever you could to nascar we started part we lindy and i had this dream and we still do to get on the road and just kind of live in an rv try that out see what happens <laughs> as we started to put now again in the beginning of the show i talked about um just seizing opportunities and whenever you see them just go for them that's what happened we were like hey we're kind of manifesting this Maybe we should live in an RV. Maybe we should try this. Mm -hmm. And some friends asked, what's next? I was leaving my current career um, last summer, and they're like, what are you doing next? And Lindy told a friend, well, I think we might live in an RV and drive all the country. <laughs> you must really love each other. We, we do. <laughs> RV life. COVID was a catalyst for the good for us. <laughs> good, good. We, we both traveled a lot before that, so we were okay being independent. But with COVID, we're like, oh. We actually like each other. I kind of like you. <laughs> like this, we, is, this is okay. Right? I can handle this. We want to spend time together. <laughs> and so as we manifest this, we had no idea how we we're going to do this RV thing, and we still don't some days. But she told the right person who told a team from NASCAR. And so we get a call saying, hey, we got, I want to talk to this NASCAR team. And we're like, huh? Like, I couldn't <laughs> even spell NASCAR at the time. <laughs> like, I know they turned left. Uh -huh. And that's that's it. I was not my world. I couldn't <laughs> tell you. Like I think that's what they do in the South or something. And we get pulled into this world, and they introduce us, and they say, "We we want this opportunity. We want to help you get this bus. We've had this dream of sending a military veteran couple out, work with vets and their spouses and families and stuff." And we're like, "That's that's like right up our alley. That's what we love doing in our free time, helping others and vets." And and that lined up with some other projects that we were trying to work, and so it just started. Things started domino effecting happening. So we're up at our first NASCAR race in Michigan. Never been exposed. So like, hey, come up, get up here. We'll get you pit passes. So I think I'm spoiled. I've never been to NASCAR in the stands. So I don't know what it looks like as a fan. I only know what it looks like in the pits, <laughs> which is insane. It's just a wider view, wider angle lens of the carnage, right? Or, or, <laughs> well, or like a zoom. It's like firsthand experience because I'm in the same way. I've never sat in the stands at a NASCAR race, but I've been sitting in the back with a hot pass mm. every time I've been to NASCAR. Who, who do you spend time with? I, <laughs> I've had the luxury of having to purchase the the seats that are way up there right, <laughs> that normal people have to sit in. That's really cool that you got that experience to go not only behind the scenes, but be part of a, uh, team. a team that's representing something that's helping our military vets. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is. It's something that I didn't know is so fluid inside the sport. They're very veteran focused. And that's what the team approached was, hey, we have this veteran um, organization called 1111 Vets, or 1111 Veteran Projects is the full name. Um, and like, we want to do this thing. We're sending this military couple out to help ra raise awareness, blah, blah, blah. So we go to the race. We're just expecting to have a good time. We have this kind of meeting because we never met in person. So the day before the race, they're like, hey, come by. Let's have a chat. We're chatting. They're like, okay, so we have this idea. They had like a check for us to have the bus. Something changed. And they had to use the money for the sport, which that's <laughs> that's what their money goes to. And it's like, but because of that, we want to put you on the car. Actually, they said, we want to put that on the car. And my wife and I both look, turned around. Like, we were like, wait, what? Like, we thought there was a bus behind us. <laughs> we were like, well, I don't know what's going on. And they pointed to my hair. And we want to put the Mohawk on the car. And we started having this car. And we're like, why? Like, we didn't get it. And then like, well, this whole veteran project we're doing we can't give you the money for it, but we can help you raise awareness for it. And we're like, okay, cool. Like, so we need a logo and we need this in the next 24 hours if you guys want to do this. We're like, well, we already have the stamp. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what if we use that? And as we took the time and, and thought about it and, and kind of agreed to it, we're like, okay, let's do it. So in my head, we're like, okay, we're going to have like this little circle, like this big, right? Because there's all this other stuff on a NASCAR, all these brands and things. So we get the first renderings, and it is the entire <laughs> car. The side, the front, the hood, everything has got my face all over it. <laughs> and be awesome. And to, even more, when, when whoever the main sponsor is for a race at the race day, they announce each car, like, in the lineup. And I'm, I don't know this happens, because, again, new to the sport. So now this is my second race in Darlington where my face was on the car. And they say, all of a sudden, number 26, Mohawk Matt. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you just bought a race team. What? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? And so it was, all these things just kept happening. And for me, it can be cool, and it was cool in the moment. But for me, it's all about what it can be. 
And it's about what we're doing to help veterans to work with their spouses. It wasn't about me being on the car. I'm just, I'm just the cute little toy to look at. It's about the ve- the value we can bring to vets, the value we can bring to their spouses and families, and help share their story in a positive way. Because there's a lot of negative connotations. If you're not in the veteran world, is like for companies hiring vets, a lot of people won't. Because they're like, well, what if they like freak out? What if they've been to war? I don't know. What if they, because those are the stories that hit the news. You're not hearing all the positive. And so we want to, in everything we're doing um, with 1111 Vets and some of the, our own projects, work my wife and I, Lindy, are building, it's all about highlighting the good and the stories that you can have a successful life. And then there are resources out there to help you. That's cool. So it was this compounding effect of just doing a little bit of awesome every single day <laughs> that just turned into this amazing opportunity that helped you build a platform as you continue to do that yeah. to support vets. Um, but also it feels like probably a, a big victory inside, you know, to keep you motivated, keep you going. And um, you know, it brings up a good point that you mentioned you have complete control to make someone's day awesome. Yeah. And it brought back the memory when Steph and I were <laughs> shopping around Christmas. Remember right before New Year's, the guy we saw at the store, mm-hmm. um, it was busy, right? And everyone was kind of bumping into each other. And I'm just kind of gazing at the shelf looking for one of those sold out items, Fresca particularly. <laughs> it to find it. It's a nationwide shortage of Fresca. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I didn't realize I was in this, this gentleman's way. And um, he kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's made a comment. What did he say exactly? He goes, he said, don't worry, I've got all year to wait. I have the whole year. I have the whole year ahead of me. (laughs) I have the whole year ahead of me. Right. And it's, it's almost New Year's Eve. Right. So (laughs) it's just one of those funny things that gets you laughing, but we're talking about it today and we're smiling because of it. So we all have the power to do that. We you do. can wake up every morning and you can say, look, I'm going to impact somebody's day in a good way. Um, and it's really hard sometimes to not put off like a negative vibe. So how do you do it every morning when you wake up and you're Mohawk Matt and everyone just <laughs> expects you, you have a huge following on social media, on LinkedIn. Uh, you do a lot of webinars, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of uh, podcasts yourself. In fact, that's kind of, <laughs> you've been helping me out along the way, but how do you, come to work with a smile or come to the day with a smile just to make sure that you represent your brand. Well, the most important thing is to know that it's okay to not have an awesome day. My whole like persona around awesome and be awesome and, and everything isn't mean that I have an awesome day every day. It's not that I'm motivated every single day. It's actually about being awesome when you're not motivated and I can have, and I have the bad moments. We all do. If I didn't, I'd be lying. (laughs) And so for me, it's not about like just being positive all the time. It's about remembering like, hey, some, all this happened. I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I'm sad, whatever. But it's okay. And it's okay to not be okay for a minute. I think a lot of, I think a lot of times people around the whole like, oh, you can't just be like insane positivity. It's just toxic. You're too positive, blah, blah, blah. It's not about being positive all the time and, and being positive. And there's stuff behind that like manifesting and you can manifest things into your life. And you will. You're going to manifest the good or the bad. Whatever you focus on is going to happen. Um, I think there's the parable of the two wolves. What, it's whatever one you feed is the one that's going to win. And so for me, I just choose to feed awesome more. And I do that by remembering that even, maybe I'm not having an awesome day, but that's okay. Because for me, and, well, and the big thing, to your point um, of the guy that, in the store that affected you, it was really what I, what I, when I'm having those bad moments of maybe it's not such an awesome day, I remember who I've impacted. And beginning of everything, everything I do, I do it for me. If I didn't, I would hate it. And I, I don't mean do it for me to like be awesome. I mean, I do it for like, cause I enjoy it. Yeah. I love what I do. I love podcasting videos, working with people. But secondly, it's for the impact that happens that I didn't know could happen. And I was telling you this story earlier today as we were doing some pot or some prep stuff. The um, moment that I started to realize, adults started following me as this Mohawk map became a thing. Um, awesome. Was, I think Awesome was starting to weave in there a little bit. I always made this stupid move with my hands, <laughs> uh, which is on the sticker. It's on the car. Like it became the symbol. Um, but it didn't really f- kick into me until I got this video from a six-year-old kid. And at the time during COVID, that was about a year and a half ago, I had a video up every morning at 7 a.m. Because I was just trying, I know everyone was struggling. I was just putting stuff up. Sometimes it was like fun. Sometimes me dancing. 
And that's what I think embodies everything for me is I'm as real as I can be. A lot of people say, oh, like people ask my wife all the time, is he like this all the time? He's like, yeah, he's insufferable. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and, and she doesn't hate it, but she's like, sometimes just chill, bro. Like, yeah. just take a break. We don't need to talk to everybody at the store. It's like, well, maybe they need to say hello. I don't know. But it was this six-year-old kid. He sent me this video um, from his mom's phone saying, hey, Mohawk man, because that's what he knew me as. And it was, he was like, hey, so I'm about to go to school, but I haven't seen your video. Can you post it before I go so I don't have to wait to get home? And I was just like, heart, arrow in the heart, like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Like, there's kids that know who I am? And then, and just the impact that you can have on someone just by being my crazy self. And then, and that's kind of what started me to realize, like, that's why I keep doing it. You don't know who's watching. You don't know. People do things online for the views. Like, great. Oh, I only got five views. Yeah, but you might have changed someone's life. And to that point, I had one a few months later where I got from this, from our friends, our friend, her son, 10 year old was having a really bad week, month, whatever. And I made a video about me again. I don't know who's watching. I just do it because I like to share. And I think your vulnerability helps others grow as well. And I shared a story of me being bullied in, in junior high. And it was me being turned upside down by who I thought were my friends. And I even didn't even realize I was being bullied. I was kind of being fake to like be part of the cool kid club. Yeah. And But I was turned upside down. Other kids stole stuff. I mean, I was... 13, I didn't have much in my pockets. I didn't have a phone back then, so I was like, maybe a couple cents or a pen. Yeah, a retainer pops out. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, my pager. It was probably a pager. Oh, a beeper. No, mm. I didn't have a beeper. Is there a phone friends. make around? <laughs> a phone, yeah. Um, so it, that he saw that video, and I guess that, that inspired him to talk to his mom about all the bad he was having and the bullies that he was having at school and all the things, and I was like, oh, it just, like helping an adult and helping just people is always valuable. But like when I started to realize this is impacting kids and like changing the way they live their life. And I was like, I'm just a dude with a mohawk. Like what, <laughs> what's going on? And I think that's part of it is for me, it's that's, I'm not trying to change the world. I just want people to have a good day. Yeah. Yeah. And you never know who's looking up. To no. You, right. And that's why it's so important to put off a positive character. And I've done this before too. You've, if you're ever having a rough time and you have that urge to post something negative on social mm. media or whatever, we've all been there or, or you type the email to the boss that you delete, but you feel better because <laughs> you typed it right. We've all, we've all had that moment. But if you scroll through your social media, go look at like your most recent, recent likes and you'll be surprised that there's a lot of people that are following you that are looking up to you. So one wrong turn, you could be a bad influencer. You could drastically change yeah. Uh, their life if they're they're replicating what you do in yours so well to the point you don't even know who's following you you get a lot of people that may like or comment but then there's a whole host of people that don't exactly mm -hmm. and it's those that, like the the message i got from kids the messages i've gotten from people you've got and we talked about before you never know what someone's going through and you just say and that's why i'm so vulnerable online people are all the time like you, you share too much you use the word love too much and <laughs> like you're just too happy it's like yeah, but like me sharing that my struggles, if it helps someone else, cool. If not, it was a platform for me to get it out. Yeah. Yeah. A little yeah. bit of release. Yeah. Yeah. And that it, you, you nailed it. Um, I had one of those experiences as well when I, I used to have a, a business um, and I had made an impact on uh, one of my close connections, friend, uh, one of their kids lives where um, you know, he tagged me on, on social media and said that, Hey man, he built his, his razor in this game to look just like yours. And he sent me a screenshot of it. And I'm like, that's freaking awesome. But why, <laughs> <laughs> like, what did I do? Um, and you go back and just think of the things that you've done, whether it was, you know, letting him ride in your razor for the day or just mm -hmm. saying, Hey, how are you doing? It, it makes a big difference, especially if someone's having a down day. So it's really cool that you're able to continue to do that and bring, bring the attitude. I still feel like someone should pinch me. Like it's not real some days. Like the whole NASCAR thing. Like I don't, I can't, I can tell you exactly what happened, but I still can't fathom that it actually happened. And it was, and, and, and I actually hated being on video. I hated recording myself. Linda gave me the advice. Um, just like when I had to start doing it for work, just turn it on and, and talk to yourself while you're doing the dishes. Talk to yourself while you're doing the laundry. Pretty sure she was just trying to get me to clean the house. Mm -hmm. 
But that's her way. Exactly. I know that. She, yeah. she, she knew how to get to me. Slid that in. Exactly. Um, but so I didn't like, I didn't want to be like, this wasn't like my dream to like be an influencer. And I hate that word, but like have, do all this stuff and be the face of something. It just kind of started happening. And I just kind of ran. I mean, the stamp, of course, my wife's genius that she probably didn't know would create. It just became this thing. And then the awesome and the way we just kind of interpret it. And it just kept getting received well. And the weirdest thing in the world is being recognized out in public. Like, because you said you have you have this persona. And so, like, I don't want someone to be like, oh, I saw him, like, yell at somebody. Or, like, be mad, or he wasn't having a good day. And so it's kind of, there's a something that Robin Williams was always talking about, of, like, he hated being on, it was a hard time being on stage all the time. Because when he wasn't happy or telling jokes, people were like, what's wrong with you? Mm -hmm. We forget that people are people. Yeah. Like, we put everyone on these pedestals of, like, oh, you're, like, this amazing person, and someone probably is, but they're still human. Like, so if you see people out there, give them the benefit of the doubt. Like we said before, you don't know what they're going through. Yep. You don't know what their day's like. Just give them a high five. They might like yeah. it. Well, COVID, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> An say, air five. Say hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's true that everyone's fighting a battle you know nothing about. Yeah. Right? And having that attitude, just it helps you recognize that, that if someone is having a bad day, well, maybe you can make that moment good. Yeah. Right? That helps them have a better day. Yep. Well, and I think, too, with COVID, like every – thing has become so negative like everyone has been focused on so much negative with covid and everything that's been going on to be able to get that positivity from social media or any direction like people are they need that they're like yearning for that and so be able to be able to see the positivity they're they're jumping on it they're following it they want to see it because we all need it right now i think we're all we're all craving it and it can get i can be a little much Sometimes, (laughs) Sometimes, <laughs> like this is probably the calmest I've ever been. Um, just because we're like in a dark room. Like when I do all the videos, I'm always running, dancing, jumping, moving, standing. Because I think to your point, your energy reflects and people can gain from that. And again, that's the second reason to do it. I love doing it. I love having fun with people. I love meeting new people. The podcasts I host, the different videos I do. I don't do it to like for fame. I do it just because I have a great conversation like this. Yeah. We're just having a great conversation. It's a good conversation that might help someone. Yeah. Right? And if not, I got from great fresca in this cup because it's a nationwide <laughs> shortage. We did. We found some fresca today. It was a big win. Bought That's the store out. Major accomplishment. Bought we, the did. Store out. we did. We did, but actually. There were only two packs. So sorry for anyone else that's looking for fresca out there. At the Draper Harmons. You know, you know, f- fear makes you do crazy things, right? I'm afraid that I might not ever get fresca, fresca again. again. It's like the toilet paper thing. Like the fear of knowing that you might not have it makes you want to buy all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Shortage. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, it's crazy. So <laughs> it, crazy. it really feeds into, I want to pull you about cause I'm a host, so I'm going to do this. So it really feeds. We're talking about being awesome, being the reason others have an awesome day and the impact you can have. It's why you created grizzly habits, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just to share, share those things that have generated success or happiness. Um, and hopefully it latches onto someone out there and it can improve their day or improve their life. Yeah, there's a lot of really good people out there with great stories. You don't have to be a celebrity. You don't have to be on the front page of a magazine no. or on um, a NASCAR or on a NASCAR. <laughs> um, if you want to be, call me. I'll hook you up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's expensive. I, it, I mean, to get is. your head on a on a hood alone. I mean, you could buy a house with that money. Yeah. <laughs> you could buy a lot of things. It's, <laughs> I I am grateful that we were sponsored. I do not have that kind of money, and we were um, guided to help others. But yeah. That's awesome. And you're doing a lot of good with it. So very, very well done. And it's fun. It's, it's, fun. it's fun as heck to sit there in the track, in the race and work with a team and to like be in, in introducing to something completely different than my day to day. Like I couldn't tell you. And did you know the NASCAR is actually like hard? They don't just go left. Yeah. It's way more than that. Well, I'm just going to go out there and say that it's probably one of the most difficult things ever, just in case anyone's listening <laughs> in the sport and they want to put my face or even a grizzly bear on the hood. Grizzly habits Good on an NASCAR? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That like, would be this pretty cool. turquoise bear-faced machine that just wins all the time. They just, oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. if you're on there, you will win? Is that your pitch? Yeah, like, yeah. if you're on it, you win it. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Well, so, they, 
going from like the NASCAR side of things, like I know you and Lindy have huge dreams with what you're doing going forward. Yeah. Like, where do you see this whole be awesome thing going? So we're doing a lot of stuff. I'm not going to share all of it because we're waiting on some trademarks <laughs> and so out of respect of like not getting scooped up, yep. but we're working on actually we're working on some really cool stuff with the people in this room mm -hmm. with you two, um, but really helping veterans find um, transitions ways to transition from the military into something else. I'm not going to share yet, um, but into something that gives them the ability to create their own happiness. Right. and create their own life and really helping um, them find the resources they have because there's so many resources out there out there as vets but we're either too super stubborn like i'm fine <laughs> i don't need that doctor <laughs> but, oh I'm, I'm bleeding oh just change my socks take some motrin i'll be all right exactly like we're so arrogant and like no oh, no we'll be okay make it through the day um and then two we don't know where they are there are so many companies. There are so many people that offer these great things. And there's some things to watch out for yeah. um, to the people, unfortunately, take advantage. But there's so much good. We want to help highlight that and connect people to that. Um, and if you if people know what you do in your world, they might get some ideas of what we're up to. Um, just kind of looking at my wife, like, I don't know what I should or shouldn't share. It's okay. <laughs> good, bad. Um, but we are up to some really cool ways to help veterans transition out of the military into building their own career and also heavily supporting an industry that you're in that really needs good people that can do and work that field. Yeah, I think that veterans have so many incredible skills and they've been taught so much that when they leave the military, they have kind of a hard time finding their place. So it's really cool to be able to see you offering like a help, a helping hand, if nothing else, just to direct them towards like a new way of life. Because all the resources that are out there for vets, most people don't know about. Even I would say go as far as the VA hospitals, what they offer to vets. There's a yeah. lot of vets that just outside of the being too stubborn, just don't know what people have to give to them and to help them. And most of them could use the help. Well, they can use the help, but they can also, as a vet, we don't want something for free. Mm -hmm. We don't want a handout, but I'll take a path. You, mm -hmm. you help me get down that path, I'll do that all day long. And to your point, it's, it's the help side. It's to help them build the life they want but also help give them a voice because as, as a veteran, as somebody in the military, you don't really have a voice no matter what rank you are. Even if you're super higher up, you're still just doing whatever the person above you is telling you to do. Um, even the generals have generals above them. And so it's being able to help them find either share the story that they've gone through. So there was a moment I had um, in my military story that people can find. I won't tell the whole thing now. But I was sitting in a hospital room in San Diego with another veteran who was missing a leg and an arm. And we were talking about his story. And he told me his whole story of what happened to him the day that it happened. And he realized after he did it that he hadn't shared that with anyone. And we tried to figure out. So we were like, we got nothing else to do. And so we're like, let's figure this out. Like, why, why do you trust me? Why are you telling me that we just met a couple of days ago? I said, well, you're a Marine. So, okay, bond there. Um, you're in the hospital, so something also <laughs> happened to you. So is is the proximity of the similar situations. And for me, it did something I never could have imagined, and it's the reason why we're sitting here today. Um, even before the Be Awesome, before everything, it was the one turning point that clicked for everything for me. And at that moment, I was going through a lot of struggles. Physical health, mental health, a lot of things that were happening that had happened um, that I was really struggling with, like, why me? What's going on? The survivor's guilt of different th different reasons, different things. Um, why did, why am I going through this and not others or vice versa? Um, but for me, what happened when he, when he shared that moment, so my career in the Marine Corps and even now is has been journalism, broadcasting, sharing stories, writing, uh, media, talking, um, podcasting. It was in that moment that I realized everything that I went through, oh, and I'm also not shy. That helps. Um, the, the extrovertism, or I call it the extra, ex, extrovertitude. It's my extrovertitude. Um, but that combined with everything that I went through, I went through to help others. I went through to put me in the room with the people that can't share their voice, can't share their story. And everything I did 
was all so when when that happened and i can tell you the day time i can tell you what it smelled like in the air because it literally changed my entire trajectory of life everything changed for me that i didn't everything i went through didn't matter anymore and i just have my moments i have my struggles that i work through and the things that help me but like my journey just went from like lifting the weight of the world or carrying the weight of the world on my back to now helping someone else carry it mm -hmm. and most of my struggle just kind of melted away to your point of like how do i have that awesome day when i get up in the morning it's remembering that everything i've gone through someone else has gone through something worse and i mean everywhere in the world that's always the case and maybe i can help them because i'm doing okay everything i happen i'm still okay and it's exactly that. I mean, you you said the words that you've gone through. You you went through it, meaning you got to the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which gives everyone else that same hope that the struggles are real. It sucks sometimes. It's it's difficult. But, you know, we're extremely capable as human beings. There's yeah. a lot that we can do if we put our mind to it. So just having the willpower to want to get through it or having someone that can support you to say, hey, I can help get you through it. Yeah. Once you're on the other side, you're like, man, I'm much stronger because of that. <laughs> um, I had an accident in 2007 that, you know, could have been fatal and I definitely shouldn't be here. And I, I think everyone for that part of my life that I'm here today because of it. And it was a rough couple of years. It was about three years of my life that um, back then I, re I regretted it. I hated it. I didn't want to live through it or anything like that. And then all of a sudden you get through it and you're like, I'm strong. <laughs> like there's so much more I can do now because I was able to get through that, because I was able to fight through physical therapy and start moving things again and getting to that other side, you now re reflect back on those days and you're like, wow, we can get anything done. All we have to do is start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the big point. Just start doing it. Whatever you're doing, just start. And it, you're going to fail a thousand times. It's the oldest parable of kids learning to walk. Like we've already, in your life, no matter who you are, if you can, if you've made it past two years old, and you have the physical ability to walk, because I understand some don't, um, then you've failed thousands of times already in your life. And, oh, you, absolutely. and you made it. That's yeah. all walking is. Mm -hmm. As easy as it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you pulled something that I didn't, and that I'm going to pull back at you. The day that, or the day that we met, because I didn't realize the impact that had until you told me that yeah. story today. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a funny story. And it's something that that I had always done, uh, you know, back when we first had flip phones and they had cameras on them, like everyone that had any sort of production background or desire to be in production, <laughs> you wanted to film things with this camera. So that's how I used to get an interaction with my friends or get a response from them when, you know, maybe they're not responding on an email or a text or whatever. I would send a quick video saying, hey guys, how's your day going? I hope it's great. By the way, get back to me. Well, that's how we were connected. <laughs> I was talking to Steph about wanting to get into podcasting and she's like, Oh, I, I know exactly who you need to talk to. It's Matt. And you two were together. Mm -hmm. You took her phone and you sent me a video message and the video message comes across and I can't remember exactly, but it's like, Hey Steve, I'm Matt. Something, something be awesome. Right. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> like, this is really cool. I need to connect. I, I might've professed my love to you too. I can't remember. You I did. think was, you, did. you did. And the whole yeah. time I'm like, Oh, my wife was over there making the same face. So, <laughs> yeah, that was that was I think video text number four where like the I love yous came across. But, yeah, you guys and, went back and forth. And I for remember quite a while. I was frustrated. I was in my parents' basement and there wasn't the best cell phone service, so it kept like lowering the quality. And come to find out, like a few of them didn't go through, and it like ruined my day. I'm like, <laughs> no, like we we had this moment, and you mean to tell me that my videos didn't go through? Like I put so much effort into that. <laughs> so funny. But but that's something that you had done that with with your creativity um and then your different attitude and perspective and everything you leveraged that to build a connection and now look at it you're we're in the studio or recording a podcast and we could have just passed by one day and never seen each other again Completely. so just mm -hmm. by having that attitude you know it in, it enforced this relationship i know my wife's listening both behind me and later on this podcast remember babe my crazy is okay sometimes <laughs> As I look at her and she looks at me, gives me this grin. <laughs> My crazy. Okay. Yeah. So what's, uh, I'm going to ask a question here and, and it's on the spot, but magic wand. All right. Unpacking the magic wand. I hand it to you. You could do anything for, be awesome for any foundation you're creating for the vets. Uh, just for you personally, like what would you do? What's your end game? 
So magic wand, I would have, let's go with 73, be awesome buses touring the country with where a uh, uh, spouse or whatever veterans are, are responsible for getting around the country, working the 10 different nonprofits we're supporting at this time or more, um, connecting veterans to each other, to their resources, because of these, I think I said 73, right? Mm -hmm. Because of these 73 be awesome buses. <laughs> um, if we're in, if this magic wand has taken us to 2030, we will have impacted 100 million veterans, because that's my goal, is to impact 100 million veterans by 2030. The math behind that, there's only 17 million there right now, but I include their families, the people they're connected to, the lives they impact. Mm -hmm. um, so that's happened. This other project, well, which I will say is in the trade industry, in the building industry, but I won't share the name because we're waiting on the trademark. Uh, so, but we do you need your help with because the magic wand kind of runs out of magic. But this magic wand has made all of that happen. And we have this, we have successfully, we are continually successfully um, helping veterans transition from the military to building their own careers, to building something that people may or may not live in um, as they have this, and this magic wand has also, because it's magic, right, has also <laughs> imbued into every single human that they can impact someone else's day in a positive way. Cool. So I don't where, know how much magic you have, but that's what I'm going with. We have all the magic. <laughs> He's going to take all of it. Uh, no, it wait, well, is that okay, Lindy? Is any more magic? Okay. Yeah, you got to check with the wife. I don't know if you could have been any more vague with the details. <laughs> no. I, I know what we're going for. I know who we're trying to help. And what we're trying to do, and since the magic's off now, we do need people's help. If you're listening and watching wherever this is, we need your help with those Be Awesome buses, with the a ways to help veterans, reach out to us. If you're in the trade industry, we got something really cool cooking. Mm -hmm. If you're a veteran in, and you know that stuff, we got something cool cooking. If you just want to know what's going on, give us a call. And it sounds <laughs> like we should be cooking something by now. <laughs> oh, but you're making me hungry. We, we, need, <laughs> we need everyone's help to do this. This isn't a... Matt and Lindy are going to change the world. It's a, we know that we have the power to make someone's day awesome and impact others. And we hope that by doing that, they can do the same. And yeah, we have our, our vision of what that may look like. But at the end of the day, if someone else steals what we do and they do it too, that's great. It's a win. Because yeah. you're still helping the people that need the help. You just want to be a piece of something that's going to change someone li someone's life. Correct. And I think it'd be pretty crazy to have my face on 73 buses driving around the country. <laughs> Oh, I mean, what if you just change, take over the whole NASCAR logo and now you're just on every NASCAR out there? Uh, that's a lot. I don't get like a kind of money. <laughs> we'll start I, with the 73 uh, buses. Like I can, I can, I can probably make 70. I am crazy, but I don't know if I want to be that crazy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll put a grizzly bear on at least one of them. There you yeah. go. Yeah, we'll we, figure it out. We, we, I can give you a bus with a grizzly bear on it. Like, oh, I'll do that for you. I love it. I want the only turquoise one though. Like <laughs> if all the other buses are like. I just I envision them being red just because like you, it's the aggressive get it done attitude where I just feel like that's <laughs> what you're going to do. You're going to have a fleet of 72 red buses and one, <laughs> one turquoise <laughs> grizzly <laughs> habits <laughs> bus. But well, Matt, you've definitely sparked the curiosity of a lot of people listening. So where can they follow your journey? Where can they help support the cause? Um, because I'm interested. I'm going to stay attached to this. <laughs> There's the grizzly in the background. <laughs> If if you've you've heard a couple of times he's back there he's making sure the UPS doesn't drop anything explosive off on yeah. the front porch or like any plastic bags that fly by yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so at Mohawk Matt Denny on every platform if it exists Gmail social media Venmo at yeah. Mohawk Matt Denny you can Venmo me Cash App there you go um, you got to help us get the buses right it's um you can find me on any platform there we have MohawkMattDenny.com. Um, you can go to 1111vest.com, but really social media is the best way. It's the where we're on mo the most. We can reconnect with you. Help us out. If, if what we're doing isn't what you want to jump into and you want to help another cause, reach out to us. We're connected to so many people like you guys that are doing this. So there's going to be people that we feed to you. You're going to be people you feed to us, but reach out to us. We're awesome. Cause my mom said we were, so it's cool. <laughs> um, but because I get to, because I'm, I get to have as a guest, I guess say what I want. I want to publicly thank my crazy, awesome wife who goes along with my crazy and has even started her own crazy because once people start 
to find out this thing that I'm dancing around that we're involved <laughs> with, with Stephanie, I'm going to tell everyone that it was her idea. And well, it was. It was. And it's going to be fantastic. So I think you're, my crazy is bleeding off onto you a little bit. Um, and it's fantastic. So <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm just pumped to be here. No, thank, oh, thank you so much for well, being and on. And since we're video, I get to give you these on video. So in the military, we have challenge coins. And so it's a whole thing about like getting a challenge coin. And there's a whole story behind it, history behind it. We're not going to do the whole ceremony because like I don't want to stand up and be away from the <laughs> mic. But it goes with, with handing like this and then um, taking the coin. And so I'm going to give you both one. Very cool. Um, Mohawk a, Matt. A Mohawk Matt challenge coin. Maybe it'll get you a, a free Sprite somewhere. I don't know. Um, fresca. For Fresca. Free so, fresca. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll take Fresca. Free Fresca. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and then also because I know what you guys are doing as, as it's brand new is going to impact a lot of people. And I think it's wonderful. There's something that I do that I carry around um, vials. So when I was in the Marine Corps, I got to go to Iwo Jima. And it was just, if you know Iwo Jima, if you don't know it, Google it. It's this horrible battle, bloodiest battle in Marine Corps history. And I carry around vials of sand from Iwo Jima. And I've done this only, I have probably like 60 vials because I never know who I'm going to run into. I don't carry them all on me at once. Don't, <laughs> don't attack me. TSA. But, yeah, right. Like, what is this going on? <laughs> but I've only actually given them out like five times in nine years. Wow. And I carry them because there's people that are going to have an impact on the world that I want them to know how much I respect them. And that's what this means to me. When I went to Iwo Jima, I got to stand where the people stood, where Marines stood, sailors died, Japanese people died, and where they defended all the rights that we get to live today. And so that's my gift to you guys, is this sand of Iwo Jima. That's Iwo, awesome. From Iwo Jima. Uh, so cool. I collected that on the beach. And it's just a reminder that anything you're going through, people went through that so that you can have your bad day wherever yeah. you are or your good day. And so there's always people out there that are set. And this is what we're doing everything for is for vets. Yep. So that's to you guys. Thank you. Thank I, you. I appreciate great. that. That's definitely a, a whole new perspective when you're having a bad day. Mm. Thank you very much. Well, Matt, it's been a heck of a time. We'll definitely have <laughs> you on future episodes. Fantastic. Um, and for those that are going to stay tuned, we have our next episode. Actually, we have Lindy, your wife coming yeah. on and we're going to talk <laughs> about what she does, which hint, has to do a lot with social media and marketing in general. So we're going to uh, have a quick conversation and talk about um, marketing, social media marketing, everything that Lindy does yeah. in her secret industry that we can No, you can say her industry. It's the home building She's industry. She's in the home building industry. Like we can say that. I'm just not giving away the name until we have paperwork saying that it's ours. Saying you own it. Oh, we're talking all about it. <laughs> well, if they haven't figured out by now, they're not paying attention. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, Grizzly Habits. We are on Instagram and Facebook, grizzly.habits, or fall Stephanie Builds It, at Stephanie Builds It. And we will see you next time. Thanks again, Matt. Yeah, thanks for having me. Be awesome. Be the reason someone has an awesome day. Be awesome. See you later. <laughs>